Yo, what it really do, gang? Welcome back to the channel. As always, you better be having a good day. Shit. Now, with that being said, listen, bro, I'm upset because some people have been telling me that I don't really chef it up. I'm not really a chef and I don't really cook. If I wasn't really a chef, bro, would I be able to do this? Go to the market. Go, 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 go to the market. Now I don't think so. I don't think so. So stop questioning me, bro, because you know I'm about this life and you know I do this. So just just let it go. All now, right now that we got that out of the way, now that I proved my point. <laughs> uh, for you guys today, I got Bistio Gotti's, Gotti's Bistio's, whatever you want to call them. And um, this deck is actually extremely fun. You can play on turn zero. You can dodge infinite impermanences. You can do a crap ton of shenanigans with this deck that is legitimately the most fun that I've had in this game. And I don't know how long, bro. This deck is extremely fun. I love playing this deck. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you do, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe to the boy. Because I would really appreciate it. Enough talking. Let's get into the replays. Um, and you know, as per usual, we'll go over the deck list at the end of the video. I see you over there. Let's go. All right, familia. Here we are for the numero uno, aka number one replay of the two days. <laughs> Facts. And it's against Tier Limits, bro. And this, let me show you how you play on turn zero against Tier Limits on their first turn. I'm gonna show you that, right? Cause it's crazy. So yeah, they're gonna activate the Foolish Burial Goods because they're foolish themselves, right? So I'm gonna activate the Ash Blossom Editor at the pedals. It's spring on my side of the field, so that thing's gonna get battered and negated. I'm the editor, by the way. So they're gonna start screaming because every time you negate their stuff, that's what they do. They gotta scream at you. So I'm gonna activate the Maximus of Seas. Bring that thing out here. They're gonna activate the Rhino Heart, no more summon that thing that's gonna activate the scream, right? So here they get to send about three cards to the graveyard and then one with the Rhino Heart, get it in there. So they sent two Merlies in there. They're gonna activate the Merly, not knowing that I had the Muhammad in the back pocket. So get that thing out of there. You gotta get banished. I don't wanna see it. No vemos mañana, you know what I'm saying? Activate this thing's effect. And then they're gonna set down a trap. And this is when I'm like. Bring the sauce in here, activate my Hoppy Squad, and we're playing on turn zero. Level six, level two tuner, level eight. Axel, S Synchro, Stardust Dragon, bring that thing out here. Activate that thing's effect. Bring the squadron back onto the field, send this thing to the graveyard. Bring the Stardust Dragon onto the field. We're a little dusty today. We both for these monsters, we're gonna go into the Sorcerer Supreme Severin Chengying. Oh my goodness, excuse me. And look at this, bro. Because I activated the Muhammad and I had the toggle on. I get to bring this thing onto the hand and now we get to play for real. Activate this thing's effect. We're going to manage the hardness that they sent into the graveyard. Get it out of here. That's going to trigger my Chen Ying. I'm going to banish the other <laughs> two tier limits card and their trap, which is right here. <laughs> and that's it, bro. I basically, look at what the heck I just did. On their turn, turn zero. I just banished all of these cards. <laughs> so here we're going to start off by normal summoning my um, life with leash freeze. They're going to start screaming again. That's what they're going to do. That's what, it just is what it is. So here they mill three cards. They mill a forbidden droplet, a Muhammad, and a Maxi. And I just started laughing hysterically, bro. Because here I'm going to send my shift to the graveyard and they're going to school. <laughs> if you're wondering, um, whatever else they had on the field, I was going to activate the shift, give the life relief fish a, a boost, and that would have triggered the changing again for me to banish anything off of the graveyard and their field again, and we would have slapped them for game. <laughs> oh my god, this replay was so... Yo, as soon as I did this, I was like, I gotta show the gang. With that being said, let's go into All the next right, replay. Familia, aka family. Here we are for the numero dos, number two replay of the today. And this one was against um Runic. And it was a fire replay. I gotta show you this, bro. Um, so yeah, we are going first. So here we're going to start off by activating our paces, activating the paces effect so I can special summon the lifeless life life leaf fish. With the fish, I'm gonna send the shift to the graveyard, activate the shift, give this thing an attack boost by banishing it, set down my infinite impermanence, and that's all we wrote, right? So here the shift is going to come back onto the field, 
the Pacers is gonna come back onto the field. Give me those, they belong to me. They're gonna activate the reasoning in here because I'm a troll. I, I, I just said level 12. I don't have a reason for level 12. I just wanted to pick level 12. So they're gonna special summon a max C because that's what they hit. Here I'm gonna activate my Pacers, right? Because we need to go into our Snopios. Two level mods, I mean my Ariompos, I'm sorry. So here we're gonna single summon into our Ariompos. They're gonna, I'm gonna activate my Arion post. They're gonna activate the Runic Dispelling. That's gonna allow them to special summon a Runic Monster from the extra deck, right? Bring it out here. They're gonna bring the Gary onto the field. I'm gonna send my Snowpills to the Banish Zone. Here, they're gonna activate the Runic um, Fountain. And here, if you're wondering why I don't activate this and go into my level 8 Askan to banish it, it's because even if I do activate the Askan, it won't matter. They'll still get to draw the three cards. So to me, it's not beneficial right now. It's too early in the game, but now they activate the Gary, right? So this is when I activate my Snowpiers, banishing the paces so I can get this thing onto the hand. And then I'm going to activate my Infinite Impermanence because Runic Fountain, if I'm not mistaken, is limited to two. They have one on the field and the other one is in the graveyard and they want to get it with this thing. I'm not allowing them to do that. Stop that. Get it out of my face. So that thing gets bodied and negated. I bring my Snowpiers back into the hand, right? Boop. Get it out of here. This thing is still going to allow them to draw three cards. Now I'm going to activate my shift because now is a good time for me to banish that thing because since this thing is negated, um, they can't really special summon one of them things again. At least I don't think so. And then if I banish the thing, they don't get to activate them things as quick effects from the hand, right? So that's what I was thinking at the time. They're going to activate this thing's effect, the runic tip. That way they can search out a runic freezing curse. So now I here I know that they're going to try and negate whatever I'm trying to do now, right? So here we're going to synchro summon into the Asken bring it onto the field I'm going to activate the ask and effect so that way we could banish the runic fountain then I'm going to activate the array on post banishing a life of these fish and this is when they activate the runic freezing curse trying to negate my ask and and I was ready for that because hitting with the substitution juice to activate my happier squadron this is the matrix bro <laughs> bring that thing onto the field I was never there bro what are you doing uh, that wasn't me <laughs> Bring the source of Supreme Seven Changing onto the field. Now they don't get to banish or negate anything, so this thing still gets banished. Get it out of my face. <laughs> I still get to activate this thing's effect because we did banish the Askin, so I banished both of their runic fountains. <laughs> the one from the field and the one from the graveyard. This is crazy. They're gonna activate um a one day of peace, and I'm sorry, bro, I'm not peaceful. I activate my menace energy and I negated that thing with my mind. I mean, also, they did set that thing down in the column where I <laughs> infinite impermanence earlier. <laughs> yo, some of y'all, though, this game. <laughs> but did you see it, bro? Did you see it? Nah. This deck is ridiculous. Let's go into the next replay. All right, gang. Here we are for the third, numero tres replay of the day, I believe it is. And, um... Most of these replays, bro, you guys know how this channel works. Nobody ever lets me slap him in the face. People were just scooping. Like, they just don't want to deal with the shenanigans that I'm doing. So here we are going to go first and activate my Brand of Regain, right? Then I'm going to activate my Bistel Rebellion, send that thing to the graveyard so I can get a Muhammad. With the Muhammad, I am going to banish the Bistel Rebellion, get it out of here because I need to draw a card with the Regain. Bring that onto the hand, and then I'm going to search out another dragon at the end of the at the end of this turn, right? Bring this here, draw me that, I draw into a paces, activate the paces effect, banish this so I can special summon the life release fish, send the other shift to the graveyard, activate the shift, banish that thing, give this thing an attack boost. That's my board. So here I, I go into the Bow Drake with the effect of the Muhammad, right? That's what I search for. Shift is gonna come back onto the field, paces is gonna come back onto the field. Here they're gonna activate Evil Hero at Dust Gold. They're gonna get themselves a Dark Calling, right? They're going to activate the emergency call because it's an emergency, bro. They're trying to fight for their life right now. They don't even know it. They're going to activate the elemental hero. I'm like, I don't like all this elemental stuff. It's only dark and water in my side of the field. Banish the evil hero because I need to draw a card, bro. I don't mind giving them that thing back. I, I'm hoping to draw into like a trap or something. So here, send that thing back. I draw into a happier squadron. They're going to activate the ferret, especially summon that thing. So I'm going to activate the shift. Now, mind you. At any point in time, I could right here with this board, I can make um, I can make this thing. Or I can make any Askan with any one of these level 6 and the level 2. But, you know, I'm playing it smart. I'm using my resources. 
So I'm gonna go into the Arion post first. And here's a tip, a lot of the time you're gonna need space, put this thing in the link summon section. So they're gonna activate the other um, elemental hero shadow mist. This is when I'm gonna activate my Arion post, right? With the Arion post, I'm gonna banish my Snopios. This thing is gonna search them out the other evil hero at dust. I'm gonna activate this thing's effect, banishing the shift so I can bring this thing back up to the hand, right? Now with both of these monsters, they're all gonna link off into the Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. And if you know heroes, this is DPE. I don't wanna deal with no DPE-ness, even though we do have a Bistu card and we could banish it. I just don't wanna deal with it. I activate the Baldrake, get rid of the Muhammad, get rid of this thing, banish it. They're gonna activate the Dark Calling. They're gonna banish one monster from the graveyard and use the monster from their hand. That way they can fusion summon into the evil hero Malicious Bane. And this thing right here is hilarious to me because it says must be special summon with dark whatever no one cares. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. During your main phase which is right now, you can destroy all monsters your opponent control with attack less than or equal to this card. Also this card gains whatever, no one cares about that other part. Point is, he can destroy my whole board right now, right? So I activate my brand to regain. Bring the Beast of Mahabon onto the field, activate that thing because I need a dragon at the end of this turn, and then I'm gonna activate my paces. It can't be destroyed, but nowhere does it say it can't be banished. Bring the Asken onto the field, activate the Asken, target myself, target that thing, activate the Arion, put in the paces so I can get myself a Seth, and now with the Seth, I can bring it onto the field with a level 8 and a level 10, I can still go into my deep seeking. <laughs> but no one cares because they're gonna scoop. So fire, bro. <laughs> it doesn't say anywhere that thing can get banished, bro. And before they they go and destroy everything, I'm just gonna get rid of it because that's one of the things about all the cards. Even though um, the whale has the same effect, it has to be link one. And also, if it's not link one, it's not gonna activate. And then if you get rid of it before it pops, it's not gonna pop anything. So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. All right, gang. Here we are for the numero cuatro replay of the two days. Now this one was against I don't remember. But, you know, you guys asked me for more replays, so here it is. Also, I have one little shorter replay. I just want to show you how I dodged two different negates in one turn and after this replay. Hopefully, we have time for it. So, here I'm going to activate the Abyss of Lubellion, searching myself a Bald Drake. I'm going to activate the Muhammad, getting rid of the Lubellion so I can special summon that thing. I need a dragon at the end of the turn, so I'm going to get my Deer Shroom. That's all I have, bro. That's, that's my board. <laughs> that's my board, right? Bet, bet. So here they're gonna activate the Gold Esophagus, right? They're gonna activate that thing's effect and banish a Thunder Dragon, the Dragmatica, whatever. So here I'm like, okay, I'm playing against a deck that banishes. They already banish a monster. They have 53 cards. I'm like, you know what? It's time, bro. I'm not even gonna wait. Because if I wait, then they're gonna get negates onto the field, not a wonder. So here I'm gonna activate this thing's effect. Using the Bestial and um, the level 2 tuner, we're gonna go into the Synchro Stardust Dragon, right? They're gonna get themselves a um, Thunder Dragon Hawk. I'm gonna activate this thing's effect, bring the uh, Hub Ear Squadron back onto the field, and then we're gonna bring the Stardust Dragon onto the field. You guys know how this goes with these two monsters. We're gonna go into the Sever so -so Severin Shipping Senior. Now, this, this is the reason why I go into this thing instead of Baron the Floor most of the time. A lot of the times you see it, because I, I, every time I did this, I thought about Baron the Floor. But the thing about Baron the Floor is that it's just a negate. So once I negate something, I, I don't want to just have one negate. I'd rather have two banishes than one negate. That's the way I think about it. They activate the triple tactic talent, but they show me that they have no talent because they try to take over this thing, but it's unaffected because this thing's effect is that when you use this thing's effect, whatever monster you special summon is unaffected by everything. So this thing is unstoppable right now. So here they're going to normal summon this thing, activate its effect, they get a Thunder Dragon Colossus onto the field. I'm like, okay, bet. So here they're going to normal summon this thing, and I'm like, oh, they're playing punk. That's what I was thinking at the time. So I'm gonna banish this thing. That way I could trigger this thing's effect because a level three and a level three and a level eight equals a level eleven psychic and punisher. That's what I'm thinking at the time, right? So I don't want to deal with that. So here I'm gonna activate the Bow Drake as well, just to give this thing another attack boost. Also here I'm like, okay, listen, I'm gonna banish this thing. I'm gonna banish that thing from the graveyard, and now. Any other play that they make, they have to get a monster from the extra deck onto the field. So now that they have to do that, I have this thing onto the field, and then I have this thing. So I'm going to tribute this thing, and I get to get rid of a monster on the field, and I get to banish the extra deck monster. They're going to activate this thing to fair paying life to get themselves a foxy tune. So I'm like, okay, yeah, 
they're gonna activate the foxy too i'm thinking they're gonna bring a deer no onto the field no they just send the kelbeck to the grave they're gonna build a bunch of cars they get a Najito, they're gonna mill a bunch of cars. They did hit a tier limit card, because they're playing this trash ass 60 card tier limit shenanigans. So they did hit it, but they don't have a tier limit card in the hand or in the field, so this thing is useless, right? So then they're gonna activate this thing's effect, special summoning onto the field, right? And we both for these monsters, they're gonna go into the Dark Charmer, Gloomy. And this is what I told you, bro. I was prepared for this. I activate the Baldray, get rid of the Drearsome. That thing is gonna get banished and the. And the CA man is gonna get sent into the graveyard, bro. And then I'm gonna get to slap him on the next turn. <laughs> this deck is insane, bro. Like, you get to play on your opponent's turn. This is crazy. Now, let me show you this little shorter replay. I just wanna show you how we dodge two effects in one turn, right? Let's get into that. All right, gang. Here we are for the I don't know what number replay of the day. <laughs> They're kind of short, so I think the video is not gonna be too long. So I think you'll be fine and you'll get to enjoy these. I might even show you another one against Sky Striker. That was really cool too. So here um, we are going second. This is an adventure. Um, they're going to activate the right of Amir. I'm going to activate the Max C, right? Bring that thing onto the... Well, I don't know. Just Max C. Because they're going to bring a token onto the field. That's going to allow me to draw a card, right? Here they're going to get the Faithful, faithful Adventure. It's not as Faithful because I drew into an Ash Blossom. So I get to negate that thing. Get it out of my face. I am going to speed this up because I'm mainly showing you this because of the thing. So they're going to sit down to back row and end their turn, right? So here I get my Bistolo Lubellion. I'm going to activate my Brand of Regain. I'm going to activate the Bistolo Lubellion, right? Send that thing to the graveyard so we get a Muhammad. Muhammad's going to activate, banish this thing. So here they activate the Ghost Bell. And look at how I basically dodge that thing, right? I activate the Deerstrom. <laughs> so bring the Deerstrom onto the field. That thing gets banished. They're going to negate this thing, but I basically dodge this effect anyways. I still get to do my thing because I need to draw a card. They're going to activate the Faithful Adventure, right? I'm like, okay, bet. Congratulations. So now they get to attach the Draco back onto that thing. I'm going to normal summon my ship. And with my ship and my um, Bistu, I'm going to go into the Animizer Pay the Rising card. That's going to allow me to activate the Deerstrom, banish this thing, or get it out of the field. Slap him in the face and then I'll have a trap and spell negate while also having happy squadron and two bestials Cuz at this point I didn't know what I was playing against right they're gonna activate the faithful adventure I'm gonna activate my animation drag guy. They're gonna activate the infinite impermanence hit him with the jutsu Cuz I was never there bro <laughs> I was never there that wasn't me it was Baron the floor that was there bro I don't know what you're negating so that thing gets popped and negated that thing doesn't do anything and they're gonna scoop Yo, bro, that is the most satisfying thing to do in this game, son. Like, this this is hilarious. Now, let me see if we have more time for the Sky Striker one. I don't know how I'm going to do the order. It depends on the timing of the video. So, let's get into that. All right, gang, here we are for the number 20th replay of the day. I don't know how I'm doing it. You might see this. You might not. I'll see how, which ones I'm showing you, which ones I'm not showing you. But I think this one was kind of good as well. So here we are going first on this one. So we are gonna um, normal summon the paces, activate the paces so I can special summon my Snopios, activate this effect, and I'm gonna target myself. Then I'm gonna set down the evenly match, right? We have an Ash Blossom and a Pistol card, so I wasn't too worried. The paces is gonna come back onto the field as well. So here they're gonna activate the Brand of Regain, normal summon the um, Sky Strike and Ace Ray. So here I'm gonna activate this thing's effect. I'm gonna go into the Wire Aurora Whale because this thing has a quick effect. So essentially, even if they activate this thing, I already know that it doesn't matter because whatever they bring onto the field is still going to get popped, right? So here I also activate the Snopios because we did use it, so I banished the paces, that way I could get it back to the hand. They're going to quick effect that thing, thinking that they're going to dodge this thing, but they're not going to dodge anything because that thing is going to get popped. They're going to bring this thing back onto the field. Oh, bring the um, Rose onto the field, they're going to activate the um, Triple Tactic Talent, and this guy is talented because he actually got to take my monster, right? So they're going to the battle phase, they're going to slap me in the face once, slap me in the face twice, slap me in the face three times. I'm like, okay, bet. Evenly match me, please, because we need an evenly game. <laughs> they're going to activate this thing's effect, they're going to go into the Sky Striker Ace, bring that thing onto the field. I'm going to activate my Business Serenir, I got to banish that thing out of there, because if this thing gets popped, they're just going to bring that thing onto the field. They're going to activate that thing's effect to draw a card, and it's bring on my side of the field, so negate that thing. Even if they did, bro, the plan that I already had at this point in time, it wouldn't have mattered if they drew any spell, because they don't get to use it on this turn, right? So I draw into the Beast of Lubellion, I bring the paces back onto the field, I'm going to activate the Lubellion, send that thing to the graveyard, get myself the Deerstrom, right? 
I'm gonna activate this thing's effects in this area near to the graveyard so I can special summon that thing. This is a level 10 right now. We had a level 8 synchro, we have a level 10 synchro now, right? We're gonna activate this thing's effects, sending the brand to regain. I'm gonna activate this thing's effects, setting down my trap. They're gonna try and bitch you about Drake, my Serenir. I'm like, dude, I just added this into my hand. I'm gonna body that thing, get it out of here and banish it, special summon this thing. That thing is negated. I'm gonna get my trap onto the field and they're just gonna scoop. That is so much fun to play, bro. Like, he really thought he had it like that, bro. Nah. Let's go into the deck list. All right, gang. Here we are for the deck list portion of the video. You know I had to chef it up crazy for this one. So that's why we got the spatula out here. So we have three maxis. There's no specific reason. It's just max C. We can't run it at three. So we do run it at three. Max C, right? Um, Hoppier Squadron. We run three of these because this is my Shadow Clone Jutsu right here. This is how I'm dodging effects. I was never there. I don't know what you're doing, bro. You're not negating anything. This thing is cracked. You make plays on your opponent's turn. I love this thing. Before we get into even any other, any further, this deck has one flow, bro. If you're not playing against light or dark decks, you might have a hard time because of the bestial cards that are not going to get to pop off. And But you do rely on Gotti for that part. So that's one of the things that balances this deck out. So be careful with that. Then we have two paces, two um, shift, one Seth. One, I saw Synchro. I was running two, but it started getting, it became a brick. Like, I, me having this thing in the hand plus this thing and any one of these things was not great. Even though I still won some games like that, but it wasn't great. So, I decided to bump it down to one. Um, then we are running three Ash Blossom because we do have to stop Maxi. Also, we're playing Cross at Designator. Then I did add one Tenshi Spirit Shatana for the same reason of the brick. If I don't have any monster, I get to special summon that thing. And then if I don't have any more plays and I have a happy in a sorry and I have a happy squadron in the hand, then I know that I can go into my Gotti place regardless. That's one of the great things about this. That's why I added one in here. You can bump that up to two if you want. It's up to you. Then I do run three lifeless leaf fish because this is basically your combo started when you just running your um, Gotti engine. So that's why I run that thing at three. Then we have one Mohammed because it's limited to one. Two Zeroniers because we are playing two Brandon regains, so I like it at two. Then um, one Jirstrom is limited to one. Two Snowpiers, you don't need more than two because you can legitimately bounce this thing back and recycle it with itself, sending it and banishing it every time, so it's good like that. Then you have two Bistil by Drakes because, again, the more level six you have, the better chances that you have into having one of these and this, and you have better chances of making plays on your opponent's turn. That's why I think about it. So I like this thing at two. Then I do have one Thunder Dragon... Um, Dragon Duo, this is my own sauciness that I added. Well, this whole deck is my sauciness, right? But this thing right here says, cannot be normal summon set, whatever. Must be first special summon from your hand by banishing one light or dark monster. Which is amazing because it's a level 8. If you set this thing down and you already started your um, bestial place, you just use this thing's effect, banish any one of your bestial monsters, but yeah, you special summon this thing onto the field, then you get to draw a card off of this and you're playing so many level 2 tuners that you basically have a free Baron the floor in your first turn if you want to, which is nuts. So this thing is actually cracky right here. Then we are running 3 um, the Bistil Lubellion because this is your main, this is kind of like a main combo starter. This is your whole Bistil deck, I mean engine, you activate this thing's effect, you get to pop off, right? Especially when you have this thing, that's why I played at 2. I was honestly thinking about playing that thing at 3, but that would be too much. Then I am running one Foolish Barrel Goods because sometimes you get to activate this thing's effect. You get to pop off and do it, but then I don't want to banish this thing. I want to keep this thing in the grave so I can use this effect and banish one of these things off of the field so I could set this thing down and have my own little bestial package, right? So that's why I added the Foolish Burial Goods, I mean the Foolish Burial here, because instead of banishing this thing, what I'll do is I'll send another bestial card down there, and then I'll banish it with one of my bestial cards from the hand, and then that way I get to keep this thing in the graveyard and then I'll banish whatever Mr. Multi Special Summon and I get to make my plays that way which is way better and then if you have this thing you get to draw a card. Amazing, right? Cross out Designated. Look at all the things that we play. I play Evenly Match. I play Maxi. I play Ash Blossom. And we play 2 Infinite Impermanence. Cross out Designated is Cracky Sauciness. And on top of that, you get to banish any one of these two, this two, and then you, they get to come back next turn with this thing's effect. So if you don't want to use it to negate something, use it as your combo start. <laughs> it's crazy. So then two evenly matched because this deck actually does really well going second. It does well going first because you get to play on your opponent's turn depending on the game, right? 
but also evenly match health clear our boards and then you get to set up your own board for next turn which is great then um two infinite impermanence because you have to infinitely impermanence people that's what you got to do then i am running only one branded b2 you don't need more than one of these things so i only run it at one um, I am running one Thunder Dragon Colossus because of this thing right here. Because if you special summon this thing, you get to bring this thing onto the field by getting rid of this thing, which is amazing. So that's why I'm running that thing. Also, it's another level 8 that you bring onto the field. If you got rid of it, if you decide that you want to use this as Synchro Material, then just use it as Synchro Material. It's up to you. Then um, two Ariampos. Again, we're playing Goddies. One Stardust Dragon because of our Synchro um, Access Synchro Stardust Dragon package, right? So we got to run one of them things. Listen, this thing and this thing, they're only here you could get rid of them. Get rid of them right now because the only reason why I was running this is because this thing right here, I was running Hero of the, um, let me see. So I was running this thing. And with this thing and any one of your bestial monsters, you can make this thing, which will allow you to special summon this thing. And then if you have this thing onto the field and you bring this thing from the graveyard, you can activate this thing's effect, get rid of this thing, and special summon this thing. So it's amazing. As it was a little package I was working on, but then I didn't like the consistency of it. You could try that if you want for your own little spice, but I just didn't like the consistency of it, so I let it go. Um, so yeah, these two, you could get rid of them. I just, again, I just had them in there because what I was testing out, right? So, um, you could put, um, this thing in there because if you normal summon this thing, if you want, if you want to, you know, if you have a hoppy squadron, if you have any normal level twos and stuff like that, you can make this thing on your opponent's turn. It's, it's in a gate and then whatever card they send to the graveyard, they're going to have to like, they're going to get banished. So you could either use it as in the gate and then they have to attack over that thing, which might allow you to play another, another turn. So it's up to you. It's a lot of things that you could do with the deck. Um, then, uh, we're, uh, we have one Aurora Whale, you guys know how this works, we're playing Gotti. One Drake over Sacred and Detenue, because we could make level 8s like it's nobody's business, that's just our thing. And then, Animation Bait and Rising Card, we are playing a bunch of water monsters, so we can negate a Spell or Trap on the field. You guys know how that works. As a Synchro, again, for the Synchro package. Um, Askan, we are playing Gotti, so Askan's right here. Also, you can make this thing with any one of your Bissell and your Hoppier Squadron. The only thing is, is that you won't get to bring it back onto the field if you don't have a fish in the graveyard. And if you do it that way, most of the time, you won't have a fish in the graveyard. So be careful with that. Then you are running Baron the Floor. Again, you make level 10 like a nobody business. Social Supreme, several Chain Ying. This thing has one use. You guys saw the replays. And then Gotti of the Deep and Beyond, you gotta get deep in there, bro, and just body your opponent, right? So that's why you have that thing. And like I said, this thing, get rid of it. This things, you can get rid of them. I'm sorry that I didn't add any other cards. It's just I was doing a lot of testing with the deck. This is what I like right here. This is the extra deck without these two. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe to the boy, because I would greatly appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, comments, and concerns, Comment in the section below if you need real life Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I have them in the description for our sponsor shop from my boy Jay. Enough talking. Continue having a great day. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.